Hey, everybody, and welcome to the My Dream Log Cabin podcast. I'm so happy to have you with us, cabin lovers. You're going to love this episode. Thanks. Joining me today is Nick Jeffries, who is the owner and founder of Custom Antler Designs. We connected on Instagram because he ended up doing a really cool upgrade to one of our homes and reached out to tell us about it. So I want you to be sure to click into the show notes and look at the blog to see pictures because we're going to talk about that project today. But let me first introduce Nick. Welcome to the show, Nick. Hey, thank you, Lindsay. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. I know this is going to be a fun conversation. Guys, if you've ever thought about doing anything with antlers in your log home, you want to stay tuned for this episode because Nick's going to tell you his kind of behind the scenes of what his business is, how we got started, and how you can customize your cabin and make it really, truly unique. So Nick, how did you get into this business? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, I was post Marine Corps 2008. I was driving down a highway and I saw some antlers on the side of the road for sale in lamps and I just had to have one. So after I bought my first lamp, I took it home and I dissected it and figured out that I could do that too. And I had all these sheds from hunting and I started my own lamps. And I did that for many years, small items, coat racks, bottle openers, you name it, I built it. And what I quickly realized, um, before I realized it was a business model, uh, was that it was good therapy for my PTSD. I just needed something else in life to keep me occupied, um, you know, buying and trading and selling antlers and meeting people and building lights and selling lights and, and just all the dynamics that go into it. Like every part of it has a different purpose for me, but it all has meaning. So that's how I started in 2008. It was about 2015. I built my first chandelier, maybe 2014. Um, and it has just absolutely exploded from there. Wow. Well, they're amazing. I can see why. And then watching some more of the details on your YouTube channel, I thought, oh my stars, it's so much more intricate than one might think. So tell us a little bit about the process. I mean, what's going through your mind as you're putting these antlers together? Well, so it used to be kind of just build what I want when I want and then try to sell that type of model. And the model's changed. And so what I've done is I've created a custom antler chandelier business. So basically people contact me, um, whether they have antlers or it's my antlers, and we talk about what their space looks like and we we design the piece based on their space based on their likes and their dislikes um there's a million different things you can do with antlers and different styles and different textures and different colors and different you can just do so many different things and so i let the client help me decide what it is they want then we you know basically come up with a budget and where the antlers are coming from and all the details of it and then we build the light based on that and that kind of takes you into a realm of um of different you know the the colorado that looks like this that costs this much that's not really what i do i can rebuild anything but um that's not like my business model you're saying you you can't just duplicate like they can't pick it off your website and say i want that one and it's not going to look the same well, they, they could to some extent, but that's not what I specialize in. Like I would say that um, 3% of the hundred um, are, are those, I want that exact light, make it just like that. Um, and usually it's in the form of something small or a lamp or something, but for the purpose of the majority of people, they like the fact that they get something different. You know, they can put that one thing in their house that no one else has, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to go to the extent of putting an antler chandelier in, even if there was matching of something, if it was different than anything anyone's ever seen, like, how is that variable? You know, what does that look like in your home? Right. Well, that's something I think is definitely characteristic of log cabin lovers. They love the uniqueness of the log homes and how they're custom, especially like the handcrafted log homes. 
it totally makes sense why they would want this unique product. And that's why that's why we have you on the show because it's, it's a perfect tie-in. And I mean, tell me what you did at the Tistad residence. That was just incredible. The home with the railing and the two chandeliers was a very special project for me. Um, it is definitely will mark no matter what in my life happens, it'll mark a point that I just hit a certain artistic level in my um, antler building. And I would say this too, that it's something that I'll remember forever based on how, how big of a project it was. Um, you know, you go through life and you have memories of all sorts of stuff. And like, I remember a lot of chandeliers and a lot of people, but there's just, there's a lot going on all the time. And I feel like that, that thing is always going to take me back. So the railing is approximately 70 feet of, he, there was a copper piping in there that just looked kind of, um, it just wasn't the style that they were going for. And so basically what the, what the question was is, can I build a railing inside the log beams that are already there without changing the whole look of, of the place? adding an aesthetic to it um, that is just show-stopping. And it wasn't just that I threw some antlers into the railing. There's actually fine details in every section. So a few of the details that I'll explain on the show here today. Number one, there was a match set of mule deer in every section of the railing. So there was at least... 12 sets that I can think of in every um, different gap. And if you look closely, you'll find them and match them. And these weren't just any match sets. These were top of the line. We had antlers shipped in from Canada. There was antlers from the Midwest, from, uh, from down South, just crazy, crazy stuff. And there was a 220 inch mule deer mounted adjacent to three 190 sets and for those of you who know antlers they're like amazingly big they're 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 above record book they're they're above boone and crockett they're like people's once in a lifetime and these are sheds that were purchased from shed hunters um and from dealers and, and integrated into this railing so um the other fun part to it is that we only used giant antlers for all of it so for the purpose of like even filling small gaps, we still used a, a 70 inch antler off like a, a one, 170 buck, um, oh, wow. 160 buck. So th there wasn't anything less than about 160 inch buck in that entire railing. Like there was no small antler. Um, and so that was the railing project. And um, not only did I love it, did the people who helped me build it love it? I, I had to hire some help because it was such a big project. Um, the the owners loved it. And that's the important part, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to share my passion and my skill set with someone. And they, they get to look at it every day. Um, lucky for me, I get to go into that house once in a while. And I get to see my work. And it's just, it's amazing every time I walk in. So yeah. Um, they decided they wanted two antler chandeliers as well. Um, one of the, and again, it was like, what can we do that's above and beyond what normal is? And we built two chandeliers that were above and beyond normal. One was four foot, four and a half foot wide by five foot tall by eight foot long. It had multiple match sets over 350 of these big elk. And then it had a giant 400 inch red stag on the top. Wow. Um, and it just had antlers that you wouldn't ever see anywhere else. Like even on someone's wall, they're like, you know, they're just bigger than that. Um, and then the chandelier in the kitchen that we did was an elongated. And it was one of the longest ones I've ever built uh, um, for as far as the yoke chandeliers. I built this elongated light and basically it has candles in a line down the center. And so I added what were they they were about 150 inch whitetail plus so they were giant whitetail again and there was a whole bunch of trophy ones 
And again, it, it turned out amazing and it and it hangs there like like a show stopping piece. I, like I see belongs. the difference. <laughs> say, say that again. Like it belongs. Like it belongs in that house. It does belong in that house. Now that house, um, to kind of give some reference to the log home, because this is a log home um podcast it's amazing like there literally there's so many things in that home that are just one of a kind um that you couldn't that you couldn't reproduce um and i know that the owner that was one of the reasons he bought that home and then when it was adding pieces you know it wasn't just adding a piece of antler art it was adding the right piece of antler art so um he he hired me as an artist that's what he did and he and he said, "This is this is what I I envision, but I want you to create it." Um, and that was the probably the best part about the whole project that I didn't have tight direction, um, and so it was amazing. That's cool. They are yeah. incredible. Like hearing you describe it, it I, it's making me realize that the pictures don't do it justice because I've seen the pictures and I've I've even seen them hanging. So I mean, you can kind of get a gauge. But then, of course, the logs are so big that it yeah. seems proportionate. I don't know. It just it just is a total mind blowing listening to you explain it. I'm like, dang, that sounds even cooler. I want to see it in person. <laughs> I mean, I love how people can customize what what they want. The guy gave you some parameters. I'm kind of thinking about this. How much? So it's almost everything that you do lighting mostly at this point or do you offer other kind of customers you know i can build a lot of small stuff i just choose not to um most of the time i'm specializing in lighting and you know like a a, a special railing or a um a unique something that you need like let's build a pergola out of antlers like that would be my type of gig mm -hmm. uh, and that's where i feel like i differ in my lights um, because I do stuff differently than other people. Like even, even my finished work is just different. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can talk about that. Today. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Cause I, cause actually that, okay. So I had two kind of questions for you that we talked, we kind of mentioned and touched on one is I noticed that as you were building, um, cause I saw your YouTube videos. So kind of like as these things piece together, I always thought they were just like a puzzle and you just kind of like connected them, but it looks to me like you're grooving things. You're really being intentional about the placement and how it's going. And I'm just curious, how do you do that in your mind? Like, what is your mind thinking about as you're kind of putting that together? So that's one question. And then the other one is you mentioned different colors and different textures and kind of how do you help people select those things? Good questions. Okay. So the first one, let's dive into the colors and textures ones is easy for me to answer because it's what makes me unique. The integration of the antlers with the drilling. So basically, based on my experience is how I put stuff together. So if you were to come over and I was to teach you how to build a chandelier, um, which I won't do, by the way, I get a lot <laughs> Don't of Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not asking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would tell you where to put this and where to put that and where to put the screw hole and the pilot hole and the, the drill hole. And um, I tell you where to be careful, but like, as time progresses, you become good at something. It's like, it's like a golfer in a swing, you know, like if I hit a golf ball, I'm probably going to slice it one way or the, the other, because I don't practice and I don't, you know, I just don't have that skill set. As you gain skill sets, you know, you gain the ability to, okay, so let's put that, that golf ball right here next to that tree so I can make my next hit. Right. Well, in this fashion, I'm going to put this antler here and then I'm going to, I'm going to have an idea of where the next one's going to set. And, and if you didn't have that vision, you couldn't build what I'm building. You know, there's, I built a piece recently that got a lot of attention and it, it had 101 deer sheds in it. Wow. 101 whitetail sheds. And the whole thing is Every one of them is placed perfectly. So, so some of it is skill for that part. There was also a trial and error with uh, the right amount of the type of antler. So literally, I can show you before we leave today, if you'd like to see uh, what type of stocks I have. And I got a truck coming in tomorrow. But, um, you know, it's pretty unfathomable the amount of antlers that I have. And the whole thing is like when you're building a chandelier, Yes, I only need, um, let's say, 
40 pieces for this side of this piece, but those 40 pieces all have to be shaped very similarly. And if you know anything about nature, that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. So um, you can't just use any antler for any project. You have to have the right antler. Interesting. Does that make sense? It does. It's totally art and I love it. It you know what it reminds me a little bit of is a mason. You know, when they can yeah. take cobblestones yeah. and like place them just perfectly or a tile setter, like a mosaic tile setter, because you have that ability to be kind of thinking three or four steps ahead, maybe even more steps ahead than that, even as yeah. you're looking at your whole selection. And what a gift, man. Truly, that is so cool. Okay, so tell us about the colors and the textures. Okay, colors and textures. This is my favorite part. So what is the difference between me and the next artist other than the style of lighting that we're building? So let's say that an artist builds the exact same thing that I'm building. Is it the exact same as mine? It's not. And here's why. Most artists, not all, but most, stain the entirety of the chandelier. So they fill all the holes with epoxy and then they stain the whole light and color match it. If you put our pieces together, you'd know the difference right away, 100%. If you were a non-antler loving, obsessed like myself, you might even have one pass by you and you're like, oh, well, that looks pretty nice. But until you saw my work in person, you wouldn't know the difference. We only paint and epoxy the holes that we create and the the basically the the wiring where it's, you know, there's certain places the wires tie in and you just basically build epoxy where you where it looks like antler. And most people look at my pieces and say, well, where's the where's the wiring? And that, that's the ultimate goal is, is where is the wiring? The wiring is buried in every antler and it's drilled out and it's, it's not necessarily, well, it is hollowed out, but it's, we use, we use heavy duty drill bits and we drill through and we go back and forth and we just create this pathway for these wiring. Um, and, you know, the thing about chandeliers is it's pretty intimidating. So, you know, I have people tell me that they want to build a chandelier, but the whole thing is like, figure out how to wire it. You know, it, it's literally took me 15 years to figure out how to wire some of these chandeliers. Yeah. So, so to tie that back into the color and the texture, I love the fact that I don't stain. I'm very proud of that. And I'm very proud of that because every antler has a natural color and a story to it. So those antlers that I got out of Canada for that railing project, for instance, there was two 190 sets. They were the biggest sets that the gentleman that I bought them from had ever found in his life. They were perfectly brown color. Now, can you imagine me taking this, this highly personalized item, as weird as that is? They're very, antlers are very personal to a lot of people. I take these antlers and I put them into a railing and then I just stain right over them. Could you imagine that? Mm -hmm. like that yeah. wouldn't yeah. do that antler justice right so what we did is we put them in there and we we poked the finest holes we could in them to mount them and they were mounted and we painted the holes and you'll never even know where those holes are and you could probably still go at the bottom and pull off a little bit of the uh you know where the deer rubbed on a tree or some hair or something on the shed um and so you get these different variations. And so what I like to tell people is like my, my perfect chandelier has a hundred different tones in it. Right. Cause every antler has a little bit different tone there. You know, maybe I, maybe I get a load of antler, like I'm going to get tomorrow. I'm gonna get a whole truckload tomorrow. I'm excited about it. Can you tell? Yeah. But the whole deal is that, you know, some of them are going to come from the Midwest. Some of them are going to come from down South. Some of them are going to come from Canada. And I'm going to have this smorgasbord of different types of antlers. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the same shapes in chandeliers, right? Hmm. So you'll have this variation in colors and it's not like black and white, but it's right. like lighter reds and browns and blacks. And yeah. so it's, it's fun. It's well, fun. it's really art. I, you know, it reminds me, I was just talking to somebody at the uh, log home show we were at. He's an artist. And I said, I think. I think there's a little bit of a, a lost 
interest in art, I feel like. But like when I was a kid, my parents had um, oil paintings. And for hours, I would sit mesmerized and look at the strokes and how just be curious about how did the artist make it all go together and all that. And now yeah. I just have an appreciation for art, like you're saying, like the, the dynamicness, the, the intricacies, the uniqueness to each animal and the authenticness, the realness of it all. I can totally appreciate that. And I, I, I love that you're so uh, intentional about making it real and authentic to the animal. I think that is truly like what Caribou Creek is about. I know that because it's just aligned so well. It's exciting. We're I'm sure I can't wait to share this episode with the guys. They're just going to love it. <laughs> so it's good. Um, and, and especially if we show them some antlers. Oh yeah, let's do that. So for those of you listening to the podcast, you're going to have to head over to the blog. I will make sure to link it below. Um, I'll get the blog put up and you guys can go watch the video there and check out pictures of the of the house and the railing we were talking about. So yeah, Nick, let's go see those antlers. This is cool. You want to see them now? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'm going to flip you around. Okay. Nice. So oh, we got a, a, project a giant three tier. We got a giant three tier in progress right here. Um, there's, I don't know, there's 60 or 70 or 80 antlers in that sucker right there. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It reminds me of the ocean, like waves in the ocean. It's beautiful. Uh, we'll have to be quick and intentional about it because I don't think the cell service is that good. But basically, there's there's piles of antlers back here. So I'm going to move semi-quickly, just show you hey. a glimpse, and maybe we'll post some pictures. That sounds awesome. Matt's. Dang, that's like a whole trough full. So anyway, so yes, there is. There's there's more antlers there than I need. I think there's even a pile of antlers sitting on the back porch here. Yeah, there's literally just, you know, just everywhere. piles of antlers <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. That's a good problem to have if you're an artist. That's right. It's like yeah. it's like if you're a baker and have never ending supplies. Right? Well, we are like yeah. that with logs. <laughs> we have logs everywhere. <laughs> I, I I do I do know that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so to tie in back to what my purpose in life is. So I work full time. So this is a business and I have an employee. And I like to share that because I think it's important to know that teamwork is important for people. Um, I have a gal that does all my epoxy and my paint. And so when people question like, well, how do you get everything you need to done? Cause I work, um, it's her, she works full time and the intricate work that is just the most tedious time consuming driving piece is her. And so I, I have to give her credit. Um, and I, she probably doesn't want to be named on here, so I won't, but, um, just know that there's someone else behind the scenes helping me. And I've hired my cousin in the recent uh, year to do all my shipping. So, you know, we have to create these things and we ship them and we ship them nationally. Um, and so there's just a lot going on all the time here. So, so on my nights and weekends, I'm out here building and um, tonight is going to be my Friday night and I'm going to love it. And I'm going to come out here and I'm going to work on that 101 antler deer chandelier. Um, it's what we'll call it at least the uh the intricacy of some of these is just tedious you know yeah definitely so where are you based out of i'm in spokane washington so i technically live in the spokane valley okay um but yeah i think you guys are in bonners yeah yeah and so i spend a lot of time in the north idaho woods because it's beautiful up there yeah it is it sure is okay so if somebody wants to get in touch with you, do they come, do they have to come to your shop? Do you guys just connect over the phone or on zoom? How do they, how do they get in touch with you? Okay. So I have a workshop and you'd be always welcome to stop by and visit and see what product you might be interested in because I have all sorts of stuff going all the time. I have a few finished products laying around, but like, I don't have a, a line that you can pick from and say, I want that one. Like everything I have is already sold. 
But I would tell you this, that we can do a lot of stuff over the phone and we can do a lot of stuff over FaceTime and we can do a lot of stuff over drawings and figure stuff out. And I, I would say the bulk majority, I'd say 98% of all my sales are outside of Spokane. So, you know, for those people watching in Michigan with their log home um, or even their modern home, I, I put these lights in every home. You know, my house has them, but um, I tell you that you can put them in anything and we can shape them and color them like whatever you know we talked about the white we talked about the brown you know mm -hmm. i i don't know that i'm ready to paint one black but yeah it, it, they are out there they literally are out there people are building antler chandeliers and painting them black right now wow there's a thing okay yeah not my thing but there's yeah that. i couldn't even i wouldn't even fathom that but it is true we we did have somebody ask us if we could do a black log home with turquoise jinking once I'm yep. like, that's the first. I'd never heard of that before. I actually found out that we could do that. I found a company that could do the turquoise chinking. I'm <laughs> like, that's, wow. that's fascinating. Well, so, yeah. so I have a website and an Instagram. Okay. That's how people find me or my phone number. But either way, customantlerdesigns.com is the website. Customantlerdesigns with an S dot com. Uh, and, you know, you'll have my name on there, Nick Jeffries. And then... um. My Instagram is just popping. I just, I just love the social interaction with Instagram and uh, give me a follow at custom period antler period designs. Mm -hmm. Yep. So again, that's <laughs> custom period antler period designs. Yes. And we will link all of that below too. So, but for people listening, it's always good to spell it out. So I'm glad you did. This has been incredible, Nick. Thank you for taking us behind the scenes and letting us see what's going on behind this incredible artwork. I cannot wait to share this with our audience and just grateful we connected. Awesome. Thanks. We'll, uh, we'll leave you with, uh, the big guy. It's gorgeous. Give her a spin.